And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Ezreal Swain. It's going to be our next deck. Let's try out brand new Ezreal again. I know I didn't do well with a spooky Ezreal deck um, earlier in the week, but I'm, I'm more excited about this one. I think this one's going to be better. Um, we have a, a good list here with lots of threes. We have Tribeam and Probulator. This card's a lot of fun to play, one of my favorites. And we have a really good top end and good win conditions with Swain and Leviathan, the combo of these two. That's what uh, I was missing with the other Ezreal deck, is missing other ways to win the game uh, whenever we didn't have Ezreal in play. And Swain and Leviathan can definitely do that. All right, so we got lots of threes, lots of removal. Uh, let's try this one out. Let's play Ezreal Swain. Good control deck here. Blows up immediately like that. Ooh. Okay, this is probably going to be pretty tough. The, we get mashed up against the Undying because we are a deck that's trying to kill everything. But we can't really kill the Undying. The kind of thing that I'm not sure about with Ezreal decks, like if I'm supposed to keep Ezreal in my opener or Mulligan and wait till later till it's leveled up. Oh no, I guess we'll keep. I am not very confident in this. Because they're gonna give they're gonna give my champions vulnerable. Sounds dangerous. I'm in. Nailed it. I was hoping they just didn't draw the undying. That's what I was mostly hoping for. Spider can block. Yes. Should be right out. We're gonna block some larger units than those. Stop bragging if you could back it up. Yeah, let's just go right to attacks. Could try playing the Swain first and being able to attack with Swain, but then they just kill their own Curse Keeper or whatever, and then they just have a blocker. I like just getting this attack in right now. One life in exchange for okay, I guess I didn't need to. I was thinking, you know, like, Start leveling up Ezreal, but maybe I just didn't need to. Maybe I just need to keep going up there. All right, but this is still five damage for Swain. That's another three cost spell for Tribeam and Probulator. Swain's about to be leveled up. And I'd like to be able to stun, you know, like stunning the Undying would be kind of nice. Keep it from attacking. I just got a lot of those things. All right, I'll just stun this ephemeral thing. Uh, how how can we obliterate the undying? I don't think I don't think we have any obliterate in our deck. I guess I just attack again. Down to six. You could be so man. So many of these things. Empire above all. Glory, 
So probably playing this Improbulator, getting a six, random six cost unit. Um, I guess I can do this first. Now I make a seven. And I'll Ravenous Flock to kill the other thing. Could see them having, you know, like Crumble, Vengeance. That kind of stuff. They could even have Ruination, I guess. But I could just play New Swain, right? I don't I don't want to use Swain's Ravenous Flock. So they kill this Swain, we play a new one. They got eight cards. Lots and lots of cards. What do they got? Overgrown Snapvine. We'll go Tribeam and Propulator. So I think we still get the seven cost ally. Yes, we do. Oh man, what a sweet seven cost ally. Shipwreck Order. That's pretty awesome. So let's see, like Atrocity. I'm trying to think of like, do I want to Thermogenic Beam this thing for two so that I can have Ravenous Flock to respond to something? Like what are they gonna have? I don't think there's much of anything. I mean, they kind of have to have like vengeance and stuff like that. Like, there's not like an atro like a. Okay, they are gonna have atrocity right there. Never mind. So I was thinking about atrocity with the Swain, but yeah, I guess atrocity stops the shipwreck order. So yeah, basically, if this was like regular ravenous flock, I probably would have been more willing to do that. But I was just worried about not having Swain at ravenous flock. I don't know. I'm worried about not blocking and atrocity or anything else like that. Tribeam's just doing two. Probably gonna kill this escaped abomination with the thermogenic beam, but I'll just get the random two drop that could maybe give me another another lethal attacker. So do they have vengeance? I hope that answer is no. We'll give him Swain. There we go, GG's. Okay, we beat the Undying deck. I don't think they had a very, you know, they didn't have a great hand to go along with the, the Undying, it didn't seem like, but. A win's a win. We'll take no it. No Blighted Caretaker. Our Leona Shivana. Speaking of Leona, so we just got that donation deck for Ale Leona Aurelian Soul. Lots of threes. Do I want you Scorched Earth? Probably. Sure. You can pair up with a, a Mystic Shot. Compare with the Scorched Earth. I was planning on playing Ezreal and everything, but I passed priority, kind of expecting them to play something. But then they didn't. Don't blink, or you miss me. I am more than I seem. Right, 
right? No way. They played that well. Still an even up trade, right? Like, we still trade two cards for two cards. Play both house spiders, we'll just attack with the two twos. Yeah. Bask in her radiant blessing. <laughs> yeah, I did have that. I did call the atrocity, but maybe I needed to I should have thermogenic beamed and played around it better. The enemies of day will fall. Fall, heretic. Back heretic. Okay, so we have the same amount of mana. They have an extra card in hand with that. They have an extra invoke card in hand, but then I have two one ones and a two one in play. Now they got a dragon. By my hand, the Noxus rise. Daylight breaks on the back. Behold the sun's holy light. I will break them. All right, come on, Leviathans. I would like to draw some Leviathans, please. I would like three Leviathans. Man, I'm sure their hand's pretty scary. Sure, their hand's gonna be really scary. Merely pawns in a greater game. Empire above all. Such little lives. I deal three damage, get a three drop. Let's do this ravenous flock. If we need to, we can scorched earth. That's the best card to hit with Solari Priestess. That's the best one. Use this on Egghead Researcher. And then get a three drop that we get to open attack. You know, maybe attacking for like seven. It's gonna make it more difficult to fight through all this other stuff. But it gives our spiders like more use than what they currently have. <laughs> Solitary Monk. I just want Puff Cat Peddler. Or if we just wait, you know, make it four drop, five drop, six drop, you know, just makes it better and better. Bless the faithful and fear the heretics. The age of dragons is begun. There are more like you. If they have single combat with that card, we're in trouble. Hey, morning tea time. Yeah, we've had had some, like, we basically played all control decks today. So, yeah, we just had real long games. So, we're still here. I just, I can't outgrind in Viola's Fox. I just can't outgrind this card. I, I hope they don't have single combat as well. Which, of course, they do, because they wouldn't play that without single combat. Could have gone for the Tribune and Probulator first. Um, and then responded with Scorched Earth, but I just feel like we need to you must have, have that for uh, some practice. other stuff. Most are cruel, vicious, and deadly. Makes that six. I got ways to find me mushrooms. Back 
So I'm guessing I'm supposed to wait until Ezreal before I play these Mushroom Clouds. Even though I'd, I would just prefer to just play them immediately and have them draw the Puff Caps. Oh, can't beat that card. Why, why can't we ever draw? I guess we do try to, I guess we could try to improbulate or Mystic Shaw on it. Why can't we ever draw Leviathan? What do y'all think with these Mushroom Clouds? Like, I would have cast them the previous turn, but I feel like the only reason people put them in Ezreal decks is to wait on Ezreal. Okay, well, we got, got rewarded. Let my stars guide all travelers onward. Man, these dragons get so much value. It's never gonna run out of, never run out of cards. So good, this turns the tribe even into being seven. The world's a big place. Let's see all of it. Not a seven drop that can tussle with seven sevens. Excuse you. There are none like me. Yeah, I should have Mystic Shot at the Shivana before Shivana leveled up. I was thinking, like, how, like, they, they were, like, debating about playing the card in hand. I was thinking that they had, like, a single combat, and I just kind of wanted to hold the Mystic Shots. I was also kind of hoping to, like, maybe hold Mystic Shot to maybe kill them, right? And maybe I, maybe I just shouldn't have blocked. I wish we would have had. I wish we would have had Leviathan ever. See if they get the obliterate again. No, just another traveler. Each journey is a discovery. Prepare the no exception. Mogbert called it. Mogbert said, Don't worry, we'll draw Leviathan next turn when it doesn't matter. Oh, they did have another falling comment. From the traveler, so Solar Priestess did get them the fallen comet, they just got a traveler as well. It's pretty nice. A minor Alright, playing against Twisted Elise. We have Leviathan, so that's great. And I like these other removal spells. This is just this is not a, a matchup where we need like basically you know Raven's flock and like all these things that do damage to or kill damaged units. We just don't need because they're all their things are so small that our removal spells should be killing them already. Or I guess we can use Raven's flock now. So I could Mystic Shot this 2-1, or I could wait, next turn play Ezreal, take 2 damage, get the free Mystic Shot with Ezreal, and use that. Have the mana to cast that. I thought you 
never ask. One shot, all skill. Ooh, that's gotta hurt. I guess they think that's pretty fine. Uh, we could... Yeah, we're going to be honest. I was going to say, I could just pass and, you know, have... But they don't waste their mana. They just bank the three spell mana. So it's not like they... Passing doesn't make any sense. I'm always up for a round or two. Blue as the Serpentine. Okay, no glimpse beyond there. Sounds dangerous. I'm in. <laughs> it looks like trouble. Instantly dies the mystic shot. You are correct. That was trouble. Our Ezreal is forever away from leveling up anyway. I'm giving them Mushroom Clouds. They're, they draw, like, lots of cards. I'm giving them Puff Caps. They can draw a couple of those five. Packed them good. Kill this thing. They do get to go hard, kill the 2-2. Two -two. That's alright. We play in build rules, son. Because I played that um second mushroom cloud. But I didn't want to like pass and then they do nothing. I'd get excited in here. I just okay. I just have the one copy because we hadn't seen that at all. I guess that'd be a reason to keep Mushroom Cloud. Hey, what's up, Arctic Fox? Welcome to the stream. A game. Go on then. There they go. Finally got a puff cap. Swain needs two more to level up. Yeah, they use go hard and they also go wide. Like they, they just play a lot of small things and go wide and attack attack you wide and then and then yeah, they also use go hard and uh, Doom Beast drains you out. They do all that kind of stuff. Take three. They kill my spiderling. We kill their picks. Deploying. I can ravenous flock right now on that thing. Thanks for the bits, Kitty Dexterity. Thanks for the cheers. If I wait, I won't be able to use Ravenous Flock at the, that thing anymore. But I think I wait and have get excited. You know, I think I think I'm discarding Ravenous Flock to get excited. Is kind of what I'm saying. I mean, I can't really play around Ruination. I can, I can not play the second Leviathan to play around Ruination that way. But I'm gonna play Swain. If they find another Go Hard, they they do have Pack Your Bags turned on. Play 
Age of Perish. Well, that's pretty sweet. Oh, I should attack with the Leviathan also. Yeah, I should attack with the Leviathan also. Because it's Overwhelm. This is why you give them the Puff Caps. Stun their blocker. Okay. <laughs> that was pretty satisfying. Yeah, I really should attack with a Leviathan also. So, I, the reason why I didn't just immediately, I didn't because I was, you know, I was worried that they would have something that would block Swain or they would kill Swain. Because, like, they still could technically have, like, Vengeance, I think, and kill Swain, and then they would have been able to block Leviathan and hurt the health here so that Pack Your Bags would kill Leviathan. That was just, like, the immediate thought of why I didn't, but I probably should have. Anyway, I think we're looking good. We're gonna draw some more puff, puff caps. Such little lies. Now they gotta kill Leviathan and this other Leviathan that I'm gonna play. All right, that kills that Leviathan. Who says I don't share? But now they're too mad they gotta kill this Leviathan. Alright, GG's. Our deck's definitely better when we draw Leviathan. That card is the real Remember this deal. Oh no. I don't wanna face this matchup again. We got lucky to get past it the first time. Uh, do I keep Leviathan? Uh, you know, Hot Spider gets some blockers, Sentry can stun. But, like, this is a more aggressive deck. I'm not, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to keep Leviathan here. If we can if we can get Leviathan plus Swain online and just, like, stun Undyings, that could be a nice combo. Another combo would be them not drawing the Undying. That would be a really nice combo. Maybe they just do not draw the card at the Undying. Oh no. This time they have the make your things vulnerable. All right, they could do two damage to this and make these vulnerable. I guess that's what they were debating on. But did not do it. Stunning the 3-3, three, three, planning on blocking the 4-3. Maybe that wasn't a good play. Ezreal, where are you at? Three? Um, yeah, there's definitely times that it's good to, to just block the Curse Keeper and just kill it, give them the 4-3. That's, yeah, that's, there's definitely some good times at, at doing that, and that's nothing to, um, yeah, that's, that's not a bad thing. Especially if they're gonna play a bunch of Chronicler of Ruins, it would've been better for me to block Curse Keeper. That'll be number three. Yeah, it's a tough it's a tough decision to make. There is the shakedown.
shake me down to the paradise city. All right, so we got to keep Ezreal alive. That's good, that's good. We get four drop with that right now. Just pass. Okay, we did not get to keep Ezreal alive. I know you're thinking and stuff, but could you maybe speed things up a little? Yeah, try beam slow. So I can't do tri beam during combat. No way. So just gonna use this thermogenic beam right now. Well, it just uses so much mana. All right, now we talking. Basically, do I do I want to do these two this turn, and then into Leviathan, into Leviathan, or do I want to do like Ezreal, create a free Mystic shot, free Mystic shot, this thing. It's a difficult decision. Cause I can't I cannot Death's Hand and play that like this with free Mystic Shot costs five mana, so that's like my whole turn. I think that, that this plus the Tribe makes better defense. And so I'm gonna I'm gonna do that. Cause you know I don't really want to be blocking with Ezreal. Go with that we get a five drop perfect smart ah uh, daybreak we don't did not get that for daybreak well that worked out really well that was pretty juicy Sounds like Chronicler of Ruin says, no place for your kind, Demi Moore. <laughs> so many years, so much misery. So many four threes. I need one more mana for Ezreal plus Mystic Shot, which costs five, and Swain, which costs five. Cannot do both of those. We're gonna play leveled up Ezreal. Yeah, there's a bunch of good options. Ruination here would have been messy. So I don't know if like open attack was like the option I should have gone with. Sounds dangerous. I'm in. Can't stop me. So we put them down to two. Yeah, I'm definitely thinking about just going chump womp and getting the two mushroom clouds. It's you know it's either that or mystic shot. I kind of think I'd just go chump womp and get the two mushroom clouds because they have to kill me during combat. All right, well, that's just lethal. Okay, three and one. Defeated the Undying deck twice. This time they did not draw the Undying. They had a million Curse Keepers, though. Uh, really, the card that won us that game was that Tri-Beam and Probulator. That was perfect. I knew we had it all along. Same. All right, back to this one. I don't like our hand as much this time. I know I kept Leviathan last time. Um, yeah, it's just kind of expensive. I don't know if any of these are a keep. Sentry, I guess. But Sentry just trades down, probably. All right, we'll keep Sentry and Beam. Basically keeping Sentry because of Tri-Beam and Probulator. I was like, all right, I'll keep the three drop. 
Oh, uh, if they go turn two Elise, Thermogenic Beam is a good answer to turn two Elise. We also have Culling Strike, which is another good answer now. Uh, hate that card. There's nothing to fear. Yeah, I mean, I think Ezreal's a good card, but I think you can't just have Ezreal as your as your only win condition, which is what we had with the Shadow Isles Ezreal deck before. Basically, only had uh, Ezreal that could win games in that deck, and you got to have more than that. I'll save Death. I'll use Mystic Shot here, saving Death Hand because Death Hand doing the one damage to them could be important with a Swain in play as far as stunning something. But also Mystic Shot can hit them, so maybe that's more important later, and it costs less mana. I need more runs. That's pretty good. Card draw. Jealous of that card draw. Keep up, keep up. I hope they have like seven go hards in their deck or in their hand. I know it's not possible because they haven't played one, but... We need some more card draw. Like a fish in water. <laughs> Glory, courage, excuses for... I can't... Can't have leveled up Swain, unfortunately. out of 12. Okay, that can discard the Noxian Guillotine. Well, they could only have three of those Gohards in their hand at most. My DNA says to, like, um, you know, give them these mushroom clouds. Merely pawns in a greater game. First, but I guess we'll keep this three mana available. But I like to, yeah, I like doing this to stun this thing, keep this fortune croaker from attacking me. I should have culling strike to this Doom Beast. <clears throat> right then. Yeah, I probably should have just culling strike that Doom Beast, then I would have been able to open attack. So it's possible they, they draw cards this turn. If they have anything that draws a card, they draw maybe maybe they draw one of those puff caps, their Doom Beast gets stunned. Okay, or the ruination. Oh, that's a harvest right there. All right, Leviathan, where are you? I sh I will never mulligan you again. Gotta go with the flow. 
They've drawn all three spray fins. Oh, come on. A Chronicler of Ruin is such a bad card. It's the only thing that card can do. This deck that we're playing against is maybe the most popular deck right now. And it does make it where maybe we can't play three Ravenous Flock, one Scorched Earth, one Noxian Guillotine, because all five of these cards are basically dead cards. And so that's 12.5% of the deck of just horrendous cards against the most popular deck. I don't I don't know if you can afford to have five of those slots to these cards anymore. Maybe we could have four of the slots and maybe get like one progress day, because we have been these game, the, both these games like we're losing we just don't have cards to play so maybe we do need like one progress day instead of like the scorched earth or a guillotine or something yes thorny toad now has voice lines i don't know about doom beast Makes sense, I discard Ravenous Flock and draw a sentry, that makes sense. If you work, burn if you don't. I know what lurks in the shadow. That's, that's probably, so my one criticism of this deck, like it has really good interaction and things like that, and it has good finishers, but my one criticism with this deck is, is, is of course the lack of card draw. Now you don't have a lot of options with PNC and Noxus, but that's something being a control deck like this that, uh, you know, like we're about to go three and two and that both of our losses, um, basically the same thing happened. Like we just don't have anything to play throughout lots of turns. Rummage isn't... Rummage is card disadvantage. It's not card draw. I would not play Rummage. Rummage says the word draw on it, but you have to... You spend a card and you have to discard a card to draw two. You're not... You're not gaining any cards from that. You're losing... Like, yeah, it's card disadvantage. Or just card evenness, I guess. It just it's card selection, I guess. That's it's not disadvantage because you're trading two for two, but you're not you're not drawing any. Card draw means that you gain extra cards. Oh yeah, yeah, you have to you have to discard two, right? With, wait. Rummage is discard two, yeah, never mind. Sorry, I was thinking of the one the one man two one. So yeah, never mind. Yeah, rummage is card disadvantage. Yeah, you have to you have to spend your card and discard two, so you lose three cards and you net and you gain two cards. So yeah, you're just so that would, rubbish would just get us farther in the hole. Yeah, Static Shock would have been good. I wouldn't mind a third Static Shock. This is a good Static Shock metagame, and, and Static Shock helps make some of these other, you know, like those other cards playable. I like Static Shock a lot. That card's very good. No, it's it's faithless looting from MTG. It's not brainstorm. It's faithless looting. Is it progress days so expensive? I mean, th that whole time I I probably had like fifty unused mana that game because I had nothing to play. Yeah, I did. I mulliganed to Leviathan that time, and I, I think that's the lesson learned is also just never mulligan Leviathan. Um, I didn't the first time whenever we played it. So I think I think that's that's also yeah that's the decision that I made that uh, cost me. Is I, I mulligan Leviathan. So I think if you play this deck later, don't mulligan Leviathan ever. 
Um, I did that and it cost me. I, I myself, I would still just play, I would just play a progress day in this deck. I guess the other problem with progress day, slight problem, is that how it does reduce the cost of those other cards by one, that could mean you take cards that would normally cost three, put them to two, and then uh, that could be awkward with Tribeam. But I'm just not sold on the three Ravenous Flock, one Guillotine, one Scorched Earth. Which, against almost every deck, is just fine. But the the problem is, is that Twisted Elise right now is the most popular deck. Just, just you know, currently, you know, like, that's something that changes all the time. But right now, that is that deck is very popular. And all five of those cards are just pretty garbage in that matchup. You can, you know, they can, like, play the 2-3 the that deals one damage to two different things. And, you know, you, you can have have that help turn these on it's hard playing five cards that are just so bad in in that one specific matchup um maybe if we want to keep those five though because i understand i understand wanting to keep a scorched earth for the like i understand like why we need to play scorched earth uh for the landmark deck for the star spring deck and i understand that why you know like noxian guillotine can just be incredible against other other decks so i understand playing one of each of these cards and of course, we understand why Ravenous Flock is so good. Like those cards, like I, I like having those five. It's just it's tough because of that one matchup, all right. But it's not like I, I just automatically say that you have to cut one of these cards. Um, maybe something to get rid of would maybe be the Get Excited. Maybe that's a card that could be Progress Day. Just kind of spitballing. I, I, I mean. Considering we lost two out of five games where we just had nothing to do, I I think that if I play this, you know, over time, I, I would just want one progress day in here. Just to help a little bit. No, Tri Tribeam was awesome. This was Tribeam uh yeah, like yeah, Tribeam was awesome. I, I'm a big fan of Tribeam. Would not want to yeah, I think I think that's that's a huge strength to this deck, is Tribeam and Propulator. Um I am not sold though. To be honest, with Chumpwump, I'm not sold that Chumpwump is better than, uh, and it probably isn't, honestly. Chumpwump's probably, like, because, like, Ezreal, like, the, the Mushroom Clouds only do one damage with Ezreal. Like, that's one damage. That's not very much. It's honestly probably worse than, the, worse than Puffcat Peddler. It probably is. Now, you, you, you like being in combat more with Chumpwump than you do Peddler, but you can, you can still... You know, go and you can still attack and block with Peddler. Peddler is another three drop that helps Tribeam and Probulator, and I I just think this card's pretty underrated. Like, if you have a matchup where you don't have to, where you can use removal spell on other stuff, and you can keep Peddler out there, um, that's a ton of puff caps. Plus, the thing is, like that that Twisted Fate Ezreal deck, or sorry, Twisted Fate Elise deck that we talked about is the most popular deck right now. Puffcap Peddler is amazing against them, giving them tons and tons of puff caps. So yeah, I mean, that's that's just something to think about. Like, I, I don't... I'm not sold that Chumpwump's actually better than Peddler. I'm really not. We don't have to, like, spend mana on the Mushroom Clouds. That was awkward a couple of times. I would, I would at least, if, if you want to try this deck out, I would at least experiment with just playing Peddler instead of Chumpwump. Maybe if you just do that, maybe you don't need... Maybe you don't need, like, maybe that gives you, like, that extra win condition that... Because basically, you know, you need to be able to win, like, those long... Like, we were playing, like, really long games where we were just running out of cards. But maybe just all of the puff caps that you can get in long games with Peddler would help be able to do, like, that extra damage that maybe then you finish them off with, with some burn spells and you can win those long games also. Um, Peddler comes down as a blocker a turn earlier than Chump Lump if you're playing against aggro. So it helps there. You know, sometimes you have your Arachnoid Sentry in Ezreal, but, you know, sometimes you don't. All right, so things to think about. And, of course, every sing whenever they draw Puff Caps, that's, of course, great with Swain. You know, with uh, leveled up Swain and everything. That's that's always great with leveled up Swain whenever they draw Puff Caps. All right, but anyway, those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button over there. And, of course, feel free to leave those comments as well. I'd always appreciate that. And let me know what you think. What card's better for this deck? Chump Lump, Puff Cap Peddler? Give them both a try. I would uh, like to hear what y'all think. All right, but anyway, that's it here for Ezreal Swain. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.